Cheers. Let's do it. Mm. Throw the wine about it. Cheers. Which is on. now, hey girl, I feel ya. <laughs> I feel ya. <laughs> yes, I feel hey ya. Let's feel do it. it. Okay. Yeah. I can't get enough of meat these days. Like it's really, I feel like it's Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I did not mean it like that. No, of course Thank not. You sure. I just stuffed Thank my you. face with meat, so I. <laughs> I think we're all there on the meat scene. Well, we love meat. Not all of us are. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure all of us are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's there? We're just, you know. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I'm abstinent. So I, just, I meant it that way. I mean, yeah. Okay. <laughs> That deserves yeah. an award. <laughs> I was two years absent before, like in 2012. I was two years absent. Actually, 2010. 2010 to 2012, and then I met somebody. And then I wasn't abstinent. But yeah, this is the second <laughs> time that I've done this. Because Vol I mean, voluntarily? Yeah. I was vegetarian for 16 years, so I went without meat <laughs> for a long time, too. That is what we're talking about, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, we're talking about meat. Meat. Right? Yeah, well, I did that for two years too. Fish. That was 2008, though. That was 2008. But frankly, that honestly, that's a good conversation, though. Mm -hmm. Like, it's an issue. You have people talking about, mm, I won't, you know, get too close until we're married. Yep. You have people taking these stances. Celibacy and all this you know, stuff. And then you have the total opposite that it's like say. I see you tonight and let's yeah. like you <laughs> that's know? how it's you like, decide yeah, if it works <laughs> right yeah. I don't know no, I think it's really nice that 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 so nice. it's like more open more freeing <laughs> do what you want yeah um so I want to open up this discussion mm -hmm. and uh, I, I think you know bringing what we do every single week to life is so awesome that we get to do this right here right now um I want to start off, and I want to start talking about dating, um, and the dating world right now. And the reason I want to start talking about dating and that topic in particular is because Arthi and I actually went to a movie the other day. Yes, we did. And we went to go watch Poetic Justice. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably going to make that movie very popular in this. <laughs> In this episode, right now, Poetic Justice, Janet I'm, Jackson. I'm shout out. It right now. <laughs> Tupac, is, Tupac is no longer, but Janet Jackson, hey, I'm over here. Mm -hmm. um, and Arthi brought up a really good point, and she said, in that movie, in the beginning of the movie, she's wearing this, like, oversized, mustard-colored shirt, and, you know, she gets in the backseat of the car, and she's waiting for her boyfriend to come back with popcorn, and she's, you know, uh, the boyfriend gets in, and the, the camera focuses in, on where she's taking down her buttons. That's it, just her buttons. It was two buttons that she took off. And then, scene. <laughs> that was it, it was just two buttons. That was a social cue back in the day. And we're yeah. talking like the 90s. Mm -hmm. um, 20 years. 20 years ago. When we were Crazy. tweens. Yeah. Right? And, and teens. And it's hilarious because, and again, you brought up such a good point, is those were our social cues back then. Well, what was funny about it, too, is that so she just unbuttons two buttons on her shirt and the guy she's with is like, oh, my God. <laughs> right. And it's like, what a difference. Like right now, if you did that to a guy, he'd be like, so yeah. like, what, what else? Are you going to keep going? Yeah, I didn't. I mean, and, and he done. might not say it, you know, but like, you would get from it that he wasn't going to, you know, like, yeah, like he wasn't just, hanging around. The expectation is so much higher now. Nice. Like. The thing about that show was that, or the movie, is that because it was 20 years ago, there was so much of innocence, and so our cues were so uh, innocent and not aware of subtle. all of these. So, yeah, and subtle, and so it was so different. I was like, if that movie was remade now, she would have already been naked in the back seat yeah. when he came back with the popcorn. You know what I mean? Oh, like, no right. question. She would have gone on the date with, yeah. you know, much more cleavage. Yes. And like your shirt. Sure. Yes. <laughs> 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 With twins. With twins. Yeah. So here's the thing is I know all of us at this table, um, we're from, you know, different realms of life and we met our mates or have not met our mates at different points in our life. Um, and I just I think it's 
so important to uh, you know talk about our how we met the the mate and then um, and often I find myself reflecting on if we were to date now in this day and age what would that look like Oh God! Well, some of us did date now in this age, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Well, mine was just two years ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah right? And I was swiping, swiping, swiping. Click. Okay. Cool. I like him. And then two years later, here I am, and I'm engaged. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, the the people that I talk to, they're just like, yeah, people slide up in my DMs. I'm like, what do you mean slide up in your DMs? What do you mean like, what does that mean, DMs? And it's this is this Instagram culture that that mm-hmm. they live in. Um, so what is your, what's your opinion? What's your take so on So that's why right all now? those guys are trying to be my friends on yeah. Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and like, yeah. I got a few interesting DM messages, but I never put two into the other. No, I'm just joking. No, but I don't know anything about DMs. What I know is if you go where people are that do the things that you like to do, you will attract the people that, you know, have similar things with as you. But that, you know? I mean, that works to a point, but I mean, like, I met my husband online, mm-hmm. and I would say that I was, you know, thinking that I wanted, you know, I was looking to be with someone for long term. Like, I was looking, you know, for someone for a life partner. You know, not husband hunting, but, you know. And I, I feel like even going, and I was, re- I am really social. I go out all the time, you know, and meet people all the time, but it actually took, um, online for me to meet my husband and I think that's because the entire culture of the way we meet people has changed like if you talk yeah. to younger people now to they'll say that well why would I go and talk to somebody in a club I'll just like find someone online or I'll just like I'll you know snapchat them or I'll slide into their DMs seriously like they're like why would I talk to somebody right. that's what they say because this entire culture is like it's not it's it's just not something to do it's so uncommon and it's probably really unnerving too, Absolutely. because it's foreign, yeah. Yeah. right? It's hiding behind the the safety net of a mobile device or a computer screen. That there's there's definitely that like that almost like a security blanket rather than going up and getting shot down, you know, at a bar, Basically. saddling up, ordering a drink. Hey, mm-hmm. can I get you one? That kind of thing. It's absolutely unnerving, and I think I like I hit on guys back in the day, <laughs> actually at bars. <laughs> And I've definitely felt the, the harsh sting of rejection. Oh. Absolutely. Well, I was like always like shooting for, you know, like as high as I could go. And Toronto guys are absolutely horrid oh, and they God. act like they're from, they act like, they're, uh, like no, just I mean, stepping out of the Let's not the paint shooting. too many brushes though. I'm sorry. <laughs> Bit of a generalization. But there's, but there's, America never got shut down. There's, oh. there's <laughs> two things. <laughs> I'm kidding. I want to talk about that model. Yeah. Why, why in the dating world, and this is common actually yeah. in North America, is Canadian women will say, "Oh my God, you go to the states, and the yeah. states yeah. guys are just oh, There's something so about like something about when they hear them. you're from Canada, like you know this broad. Yeah, they want to get here. They're just like <laughs> <laughs> right now. Some they of them here. do. You mean they want to get in here? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> literally and figuratively. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they can know anything about. Us. And so we seem rather exotic. Mm-hmm. We're not, you know, Americans are like very, a bit cookie cutter. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. when you look at this pedestrian, Ooh. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. and when you look at this table, up. it's very diverse. And this is what Toronto they're attracted Canada's to. Yeah. And this is what, you know, is kind of intriguing. And so when I go to a bar here before I was married, I would get shot down all the damn time. You walk, too. You walk into a place in the States and it's just like, you can't. You can't get them off you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was just off. like this. It's like um, shooting fish in a barrel. Mm-hmm. Easy peasy. <laughs> <laughs> it is. That's the lore that we have. Okay. What does that mean? Oh, you've okay. never heard that? No. Okay, hold on a second, though. We had... We were just talking about this new scenario of people just swipe, swipe, chat, chat, blah, blah, blah. There are no communication skills whatsoever mm-hmm. being developed. Like, people can't hold a conversation for no. five minutes. No. It's absolutely pathetic. Or just knowing your good up. angle. They won't even <laughs> <laughs> it's like, that's the skill now, is just knowing how to take it's a not selfie. It's a bad skill. All my selfies are gross. <laughs> but 
It is a cultural thing and it's a generational thing because you can go many other places around the world, Europe, Asia, Latin America, people have conversations. Mm -hmm. They yes. want to talk to you. Yes, there mm -hmm. is this culture of sweep, sweep, swipe, swipe, whatever it is, you know, but they <laughs> like, like, they want, you know, they're, they're, they might be more collective, like, sort of cliquish in their groups, but they're still very communicative. Mm -hmm. And here, that's sorely lacking. True. But it, it extends way beyond dating, because I noticed yes. that when I was pregnant and taking the damn streetcar to work every day, oh nobody ever got up for me, because everyone was on their phone like this. And it's not just the young people. It wasn't just like the asshole teenagers. It was the business people, the people mm -hmm. going to King Street, or whoever, mm -hmm. and everyone's like this, and I'm standing there with this, my big belly, and nobody... You'd have to cry to get somebody to get I'd out of I'd have to like room. really, you know, put it on, rub my yeah. belly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think... Like, wow, I, I, these twins to come on. Yeah. I think... Like, look at me, and then be like... Okay. Mm. Yeah. I think that's even though even just the area you're in, because so? I didn't have that. I didn't have that. But you guys were a little more downtown. We were downtown. I'm. I got helped. I threw up on the bus, <laughs> the bus three times. So, oh. and everyone was oh. willing to take me to the hospital. Right. Like, and it was there always actually good men. Yeah, that's <laughs> like you so, have to go to the point of yeah, out, basically. But, I mean, yeah, just it's you true. Being pregnant alone. Yeah. Here's yeah. here's something I want to plow at you guys is. You know, we're all in our 30s, mm -hmm. and... Oh, me really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling 29 everyone. and old, and, <laughs> and you know, um, most of us are in relationships, and what does it feel like when someone comes up to you, and they're younger than you, and they hit on you? Like, does it, does it make you feel like... I don't know like, I, know. <laughs> I, know. I was about to say, I'm, what? No idea. <laughs> Maybe you should answer your own question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think when, you know, someone younger comes up to you and hits on you, you're just like, aw. <laughs> <laughs> you poor guy. You don't know which hand to look at. Yeah, it's like, you'll find someone. Yeah, it's you'll okay. Find well, someone. okay, okay, hold on. Let's, what is the youngest let's go there what's the youngest 24. that you 24 I was just gonna say 24 that, that you have Are dated you kidding me? meaning me or that that, that you're when willing I was 24 I dated 24 really oh, that that they, they oh, I'm 29 so okay so yeah. why what is it what do you think it it's is it's just not a thing for me it's not like I don't know age or a young guy comes up to me I'm not like oh my god I feel so special this 12 year old yeah yeah I don't care. Yeah. Well, know. it's like a nice wine. Like, but sometimes it's nice comes? to know you still got it, whether they're young <laughs> yeah, or old yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's fine. But sometimes, I'm not saying that, like, the regular, like, you know, cat calls are appreciated because they're not. <laughs> but sometimes if a guy nicely approaches you, mm -hmm. I feel like I'm appreciative of that. I'm flattered by it, you know, like yeah. if they do it in a tasteful, respectful yeah, so way, similar. which is probably like we've we've all experienced that at some point because we were the pre-online dating too, right? Yeah. So It's funny you say that because uh, two weeks ago I went to Vancouver and I accidentally forgot my ring. Back the yeah, I accidentally do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I asked him for my ring back at the apartment, and um, Rick, my fiance, said, uh, uh, he, you, he goes, you forgot your ring. And he goes, you purposely did that, or you purposely did not do that? And I said, it, my flight was at 6 o'clock in the morning, and I, I forgot it. Mm -hmm. And I came back, and he said, um, and he's a very, you know, a very aware mm -hmm. individual. I have to say he's a very aware individual. And so um, when he came back and he goes, do you like not wearing your ring sometimes? <laughs> and also being a very aware individual, <laughs> I answered honestly. And I said, sometimes it's nice when I don't have my ring on and someone does approach me because it feels like I still got it. Yeah. Right? Uh, I would be, but turn the tables. How would you feel if, like, he doesn't have a ring on right now because you guys aren't married yet. Yeah. But how would you feel if he doesn't wear it and he goes out and he says, I appreciate it when people come up to me. I don't know that I would be yeah. okay. so on with that. It's a trust Honestly, thing, though. It's if, a trust a girl, thing. if a girl hit on my husband, I'd be like, yeah. I feel like I would be that you, way, too. You I'd be like, got I thought it. So too. I know, right? That's what so, I would say. I'm actually with you on that because I did turn the tables and I said, how would I feel if that he said that and a girl did hit on him? I'm like, all right, my man. He's yeah, got it. Pretty He's but pretty I think the difference here is that if you're intentionally taking it off and you're saying you appreciate it, it's kind of like, what are you looking for? like? And you say that I kind of like that. So then I feel like that I wouldn't like if it was something that it was deliberate that he was seeking. Yes. 
Do you if know what I mean? If it, if it just happened, validation. but if it's like, it it's like, like I'm not enough to validate exactly. you. Like I'm with you every day, yes. or, you know, like. So actually it's, so this takes me into relationships, right? So, so now we've all dated, we met our mates, we're in this relationship and, um, and now you've been to, with the partner for what, two, three years, and we're considering having babies, and some and some of you guys do at the table, which we will get to. And what at that point, what does that relationship look like? Like, is there what does the thrill look like? What does the um, what does the like the va va boom in the relationship look like? <laughs> well, I know I love it. The va va boom is a good way to describe it. So you're talking about this whole thing of sort of trust and, and, you know, what that not wearing that ring could be. So for someone like me who's in a relationship for almost 10 years now, but doesn't have a ring. Because you're common law. Because we're common law. And we actually appreciate that. It's sort of like, okay, I can go out and be out and nobody technically knows. Mm -hmm. I wear all kinds of rings. And when people look at this ring in particular, mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, this is my, oh, oh are, are you, no, 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 this is my championship ring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this is my champion of me ring, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because I wear it on that ring because I don't care about stuff like that, right? That just doesn't, it's just not me. So it's funny because if you switch that sort of thought process now, we live in a society where you don't ha it's not that you ever had to be married to be married yeah. but you know there are different s family structures right mm -hmm. and fortunately i think in canada we are fortunate that you can be with someone for a long period of time and common mm -hmm. law is practically like being married mm -hmm. in under the law right a lot of other countries it's not like that mm -hmm. um but it's it's something where you know, no matter what situation you're in, whether it's common law, whether it's married, whether you're just dating, relationships are about creating it every single day. Every day, every day. Just because you sign a piece of paper or just because you yes. bought a house or just because you use the same car, mm -hmm. you have to build it, you know? Like, you're not blood. Mm -hmm. You can go and you can go it's and given. it's like, mm -hmm. You're two yeah. different spirits mm -hmm. on different planes that happen to meet mm -hmm. and you're like trying to make these energies stay together and sometimes they don't want to and yeah. sometimes yeah. you gotta bring them back. And <laughs> it's like that constant, right? Yeah. It's you creating it. How did you creating meet? the va va boom. Yeah. <laughs> How did you meet Jason and why did you guys decide to do common law and not get married? Okay, let me tackle one. Okay. <laughs> so the reason why I said earlier about going places where you like doing things and being around people that do things that are, you know, you have these mm -hmm. commonalities and you can build from there, because that was my success story is that I would, you know, I've always been an athlete and I always, you know, was a part of some sort of team, whether it was volleyball or basketball or kickboxing or snowboarding, whatever it might have been. I happen to have met my guy playing beach volleyball. And, you know, it wasn't intentional by any means, you know? <laughs> I was just sitting, it was pretty funny. I was sitting on the, the step, I couldn't find the people I was supposed to go play with, and I'm sitting there all screw-faced because I couldn't find, and I'm pissed off because I don't have anyone to play with. And some <laughs> tall, like, six, four, blonde hair guy rolls up. Was and he's at the time? Hold on. <laughs> rolls up and says, hey, you want to play? And I'm like, uh, and I noticed that he came from the team of people playing with the only <laughs> color folk on the entire beach at that time. I'm like, okay. So I rolled over and sure enough, Jay needed a, a, a partner. So uh, that's, that's how we became oh, friends. And that's amazing because that's like the high school way, yeah. right? Like, listen, <laughs> my friend, no. my friend thinks you're cute. If you want to like funny? come over there with me, that's essentially right? what happened. That's, yes. but that's lucky because that's like high school no, organic. But, no, that's but, so cute. But that's, that's because people aren't afraid to talk to people. Well, mm -hmm. yeah. And that like, was, like, just, no barriers. Right? Like, yeah. go talk to the person, yeah. you know? What year was this, if you don't mind me asking? Oh, eight, maybe? So from 08 until now, you guys have also had a child. Yes. And, um, and so now the relationship has morphed. And, uh, like, 
if you were to go back and date your partner again in this day and age, would it still look the same? You want to say yes. <laughs> you know what? Because I've been with him, I didn't really have to go through that whole sweep, swipe, swip, swash, <laughs> yeah. and like figure all that stuff out. So because I don't really know it, yeah. you know, and I did it the organic way, or at least the way we grew up doing yeah. it, I don't know what that would look like now. Right. You know, There's personally, I think yeah. my character is I like getting deeply involved in the things that I'm interested in, and I would expect the people that I connect with would be a part of those groups somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's just for me, though. There's something to be said, though, about the way that we used to socialize to now, and maybe that is the barrier with which we can't develop these relationships organically like we used to. Because I kind of got thrown into my relationship with my husband where it just kind of happened organically. We became friends. It wasn't How a swipe swipe thing. Uh, like on a balcony, his friend, he was staying with his friend who was my neighbor, very random. Either way, like I feel like we met on, like we, we were friends and then I invited him to play volleyball with me and then it just kind of grew from that. Mm -hmm. But I feel like now that kids who are growing up, at least, um, you know, Gen Z, younger millennials, maybe they're not getting out there and doing as many things that we used to do, yeah. be it sports, be it activities, um, activities social clubs, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I feel, I feel like there's a, there is a group and there's definitely a movement towards reconnecting with people that yeah. way. Mm -hmm. But like we're so engaged with, you know, like you, you see things pop up like uh, uh, a rec room, like which is in Toronto, which is all like games oh, yeah. and that kind yeah. of thing, right? Like there, yeah. super fun. But I, it's not really meant for meeting people outside your own social mm -hmm. networks. Mm -hmm. Whereas like sporting clubs and like, you know, I don't know, lawn yeah. bowling. <laughs> like, uh, I think the moral, yeah. but the moral of the story, Daphne and Shannon's success, volleyball. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think everybody who's looking for love should pick up volleyball. Beach volleyball. Beach volleyball. So, yeah. you know, I was never that good in high school. I don't think I'm But you know what? It's never too late <laughs> to change your life. So, Arthi, you met your husband on, on this app, and, um, and now you're married uh, for, for about a year now. Do you think that how busy you are in your profession and how ambitious and motivated you are, do you think that in this day and age that would have ever happened? Or do you think that... Like to organically meet someone? Yeah. I mean, everybody is busy. Everyone has been busy. Like the levels of busy change and fluctuate with the demands on the person. And that has changed with technology, sure, and all of these things and the way that the job market is, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're... I think everyone is on call like an emergency doctor now, essentially, mm -hmm. yeah, right? Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter what your profession is. You can yeah. be a makeup artist, you could be, it, it doesn't matter, like, or, or you could be a brain surgeon, like you are constantly on call to a degree. Mm -hmm. So I think that everyone is that busy and I think you can prioritize whatever you want mm -hmm. at the end of the day. I think it's intentional. Yeah. You have to be intentional about the things you want to achieve in life and but if I a relationship that, yeah. is one of them. But I think that the, the thing was that being from like an older generation where there was not like online dating was frowned upon for a good period of my life mm -hmm. yeah. you know now it's like oh that's how you meet people mm -hmm. but you know uh, it was something that I totally did not want to do um, but it just became and it's not like I didn't date people organically too you know I had relationships where you know I had met them like they picked me up in a bar like a usual people you know the story you would get yeah same but, old same old yeah, yeah. but um, it was just it became so much more common for people to meet that way mm -hmm. that it almost forced me into it so mm -hmm. I was kind of like I guess I have to mm -hmm. you know and because of that um, I did it and I found success and I don't know that it will work for everyone but I told you to do it and you <laughs> and found, I, success. And I found success uh, so so yeah. I feel like there's I mean volleyball and online um, <laughs> but I feel like, like where you put your mind to it, it is, you know it is. and you decide and you put yeah. your energy there then but you kind of also you cultivate. you are limited to the way the world is evolving yeah. mm -hmm. and the world was evolving in that way and it became that I couldn't just, no matter how much I was resisting it, I couldn't just rely on an organic meeting um, if I wanted to like yeah. w meet that person. Yeah, so I was like, okay, well, like let that. me try what. Yeah, so I was like, let me try what 
this new thing is that people are doing and see if it works. And it was something that everyone was, you know, doing and it kind of felt like, mm -hmm. I mean, if I met my husband on it, obviously he was doing it too, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So would, you, so would like, you say, would the two of you say that a good part of that online experience is, is sort of the vetting? Like, do you think that helps? You well, yeah, right I mean, but that's the same thing as in real life, right? Like, if you go out on a date with someone, like, you still are able to disqualify people based on certain things <laughs> yeah. or, or, you know, there are strikes or there are not and there are qualities that you look for. So it was the exact, honestly, the exact same online. The dynamic is different with texting. So I think for me anyways, as an old school person, and probably for you too, was... Uh, get it like get on the phone with them or get in person with them as soon as possible because mm -hmm. I'm not texting wasn't my first mode of communication oh, as it is for a lot of the younger people yeah. so like a lot of nuances are missed mm. so like I was like okay I'm gonna meet up with this person as soon as possible to figure out whether or not they are somebody that I actually want to invest time in right there can be digital chemistry and then absolutely, absolutely. no yeah. physical yeah. chemistry, physical chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. See, I yeah, realize absolutely. that as well. Or yeah. totally what physical chemistry and no mental. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. What do you What do you mean you realize that? Well, I did try the um, online, okay. um, you know, side swipe thing. And <laughs> sweep, swipe, yes, swipe, swap. After my last major relationship that ended, I was like, okay, after a year, I was kind of ready to go back out there. And I was like, let me try this online thing because a lot of my friends had met people mm -hmm. online, right? So, and they actually got married as well to these people. So I'm like, all right, let me just try this. And I started like chatting with people and you would have full on conversations and like really connect. And, and you'd be like, these people seem really cool. Okay, let's meet up for, I would be like, let's go meet up at a coffee shop just for safety. And just like, you know, it's a pretty neutral spot. And, you know, you meet them and you're just like, yeah, we're going to be good as friends, really. <laughs> do, you, do you think, so um, you just recently had a child mm -hmm. two years ago. Well, <laughs> 17 months ago. 17 yeah, months ago. Yeah, 17 months ago. And, yeah. um, and I did not meet his father online. His father and me, we were through family, family relationship friends we met. And we had a connection and that's just it. It was physical chemistry. And that was a lot there. And so, do you feel yeah. as... As someone who is a single mother mm -hmm. uh, to a child, that when you're dating these people, like you said when mm -hmm. um, before we entered the table, you said this guy tried to pick you up from a bus, and you're like, yeah. "Boy, you don't even drive. <laughs> <laughs> don't try to talk to me." I mean, I'm not. I'm not. I got car seats. <laughs> yeah, I do got car seats. For you got real. so many car seats. So, <laughs> like, how has what does dating life look like in your realm of the world? Honestly, like at this point in my life, I'm just kind of like, it's not like I meant it in a very materialistic way. It's just like, ultimately, I, if I'm going to be with anybody now, I go to bed at like 9, 30, 10, mm -hmm. you know, my time, my sleep is essential for my survival. And, How are you and also, right now? <laughs> well, I'm kind of drinking, so I'm great. Um, but no, like for real, like my sleep's essential and I'm like not, my time with my son's like the most precious, especially at this stage of his life. I'm like, nothing tops that. That's a priority for me to be with him and see him through this time, right? So like anybody else to me is like, you know, sorry, but you're like fifth in the lineup. So <laughs> I was like, sleep, you come after maybe like, no, you come after my beauty regimen, <laughs> basically. <laughs> so it's like, you know, like it's really not like the it's ideal a position for a person, yeah. you know? And There's it's like- wrong with that. I mean, do you? Yeah, no, yeah. there's, I mean, it doesn't, it works for me yeah, right as long now. As, you're, as long as you're open about it. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, it's just in order to be fair. Yeah. Because you want to attract, mm -hmm. if you're looking, that is. Well, you want not to, really. Exactly. <laughs> but you but attract if, the best people when you're not looking. Oh, yes. Maybe. But you Always. can say that, but if you're online, aren't you looking? Well, I'm not right now. No, That's but I'm really saying, know. but I'm saying, like, you can still. I know it's. Everyone loves these adages too, which are great yeah. and are effective in some cases and accurate in some cases, and they don't always apply, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, so I think what it is is it's not that you're not looking because I think in essence, as human beings, we're all we always we're want open. to be connected. Yeah, right. We always want yeah, to be connected, yeah. right? I think it's more the fact that your attention, you you're not. Uh, like 
desperate for it. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. not. Yeah. It's not your every thought. It's yeah. not your focus. It's not like your, your soul source. You know of what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. It's more like okay, I know who I am. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And up and the, the person that I want is gonna be like this. Mm -hmm. And when they're here, they're here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not gonna kill myself looking for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm you know, but I'm gonna be open to it. But I'm also not going to be like, oh my God, where the hell are you? I got a, I got a fixie girl. All right, fix me. <laughs> fix me. I got a fixie. Fix <laughs> <laughs>